This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy web show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the opportunity to have a drink and a chat with somebody that loves dogs so much, she's willing to board them in her own home. I'll tell you all about her and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Radio.com, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information, on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink with a business owner, a pet parent, a dog walker, pet sitter, in-home boarding provider, dog person, fitness fanatic, Texan, dogma to Rudy, RJ, Reese, and Roan, secretary of the Texas Pet Sitters Association, Deanna Shar, which she was so kind to remind me that it rhymes with bar. So thank you for that so that I sure. wouldn't mess that up. Of course. <laughs> Welcome, Deanna. It's so nice to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So I usually do a drinking game on this show. So let me go ahead and let our viewers and listeners know every time you hear this word. The secret word is Texas. If you're drinking something and want to play our drinking game, take a drink, but make sure that you're always drinking responsibly over 21 to drink and never drinking and driving. She won't know what the word is, but I will. And I'll make sure she says it a lot so that the drinking game's worth playing, right? (laughs) So what are you drinking today, Deanna? Drinking water. I, I'm not surprised because you gave me the heads up that you're not a drinker, but I know you're a fitness fanatic. So are you drinking water because you're kind of one of those people that carries a jug around all day and like forces yourself to drink a certain amount of ounces? That's pretty much it. Um, I do work out really hard every day and I personally would rather eat my calories than drink them. So I do try to drink plenty of water to just stay hydrated and you know, help with the metabolism and all that kind of stuff. Are very cool. Well, I've seen you on Facebook lifting some serious weights. So I know that you need to hydrate after all that, because I can never recreate some. I mean, how much do you like lift? Like, give me some of your records. Well, like a deadlift. My re- my personal record is 257 pounds. My back squat is like 210. I did a last year at the age of 50. I did a squat power clean at 130. So that's pretty, that's pretty good for a female, not to mention one that's, you know, a little more mature. I'm proud of that. You should be. That's amazing. That is so awesome. Well, I know that you don't drink drink, so I'm not going to drink either. I like to have cocktails. I like to have wine and I also like to have mocktails. And one of my favorite things to drink is herbal teas. So today I'm having an herbal tea. It is hibiscus tea with a simple syrup that I made that was infused with cinnamon. So it's a spiced hibiscus iced tea. Mm. So cheers to you and your water and thanks for being on the show. (laughs) Thank you. So I want to dig right in to boarding in your home Mm -hmm. because I want to know all the details. I have taken dogs into my home, but when they were the only ones there, it was like one dog or a pair of dogs that lived together. So you have four dogs of your own. How many dogs do you take in in addition to yours? The most I will take in is 10. 
I don't have 10 very often, especially not this last year since business has just been so bad because of COVID. Right. But I, I consider myself more of a boutique type boarding in that I don't take any more than 10. And I'm pretty picky about who I let come in. And the reason for that is, you know, I do have four dogs of my own. They live here. This is their home. And the dogs have to get along. And if they don't get along, it's not fun for the visitor dog. It's not fun for my dogs. And it's not fun for me. So I'm very picky about who I let in. I do not market to the grand population. I do referrals only. Perfect. And they just have to be the right fit for me. I'm not the right fit for everybody. I, in fact, I've had clients that have brought me their dogs that their dogs are miserable. You know, they're very either anxious or too high strung for my environment. Even though I'm on an acre of land, sometimes it just doesn't work. And I'm very honest about that because for me, it's not about how many I have, how many I can cram in here, but it's about their experience. So like, I want them to want to come here. And I want them to be happy here. And I want them to go home happy. I mean, how many times have you heard from different people? I brought my dog to X daycare and oh my gosh, you know, they were traumatized for a week. Um, That breaks my heart. So, you know, it's real important to me that their experience is good here. It's safe. It's a friendly environment and that um, they have fun. Perfect. So that brings me to our game for today, which is the perfect segue. I always have a game at the beginning of the show to introduce my guests and the topic we're discussing. And today's game is called No Vacancy. So I want to ask you, how many of these would you allow to return to your home? Let's say that these dogs did something or their pet parents did something. Mm -hmm. Would there be vacancy next time around? So the first one is... The dog is grumpy around strangers. Is there vacancy or is there no vacancy? Probably vacancy just because uh, grumpiness. I mean, we all get a little grumpy here and there. Like I have a 14 and a half year old Cocker Spaniel and he's grumpy, but he's still fine to be here. And, you know, they're grumpy. I can't help that if that's how they are. As long as they're getting along with others and they're, they're safe and they seem like they're having a decent time, then I would say vacancy. Okay, cool. How about a dog that is a drooler and just drools all over the place? <laughs> <laughs> I would say in these times, I would say yes. <laughs> <Vacancy>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just because, yeah, I mean, it, poor guy. I mean, they can't help that. And I mean, it could be, they could be anxious So I would have to just see, you know, on a, you know, case by case basis, because that could be a sign of anxiety. And if it is, and if I can tell that they're not happy, I would say no vacancy. Got it. Perfect. How about a dog that seems to be in need of a bikini wax or manscaping (laughs) all the time? (laughs) You Uh, know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Well, if, if uh, there's a lot of ifs around this, so if, you know, the client's a long-term client, if the dog is an is a great dog and gets along with everybody, you know, I can I can deal with that. I mean, you know, it is my house though and I'm pretty picky, but you know, I I could probably say vacancy on that. Okay, cool. How about a dog that scoots his or her booty all over the place? Um, I would say vacancy, but I would also have a conversation with the client and say, <laughs> this is what's going on. You may want, I mean, could, seriously, it could be an issue. Like they could have problems with their anal glands and they get infected and it's a bad thing. Correct. Um, so, and I have, you know, tile all over my house for that reason. So <laughs> I would say vacancy Perfect. That. Awesome. How about a dog that always sniffs you inappropriately? <laughs> Well, I would say vacancy because I'm pretty confident in my abilities to stop that. (laughs) It's called pet corrector spray. (laughs) Perfect. Okay. (laughs) I would try to help the dog not do that anymore. Oh, awesome. Okay. How about the dog pooped on your bed the last time they were there? I would say vacancy because that's my fault because my (laughs) rules are they don't go in my room. (laughs) Okay. Uh, They don't have access to my room. So if they got into my room, then that's my fault. So I would probably say vacancy. I like that. That's reasonable. How about a pet parent's dog that always waits for the last minute to book? This is a, it depends. (laughs) So (laughs) if, you know, again, 
you know, we're in a different environment now with COVID and, and, you know, with, you know, my business has been, you know, the worst it's ever been this year, as I'm sure it has been for many people. And, you know, those last minute people aren't so much of a, a pain anymore because I, for one, I don't have a lot of borders right now. And, and two, just my business, I, I need the business. Right. So um, I kind of am grateful for anything I can get at this point. <laughs> and it's more sustainable and more manageable now since you, you don't have a million emails and requests coming in, then it's more doable, right? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. How about a pet parent that checks in multiple times a day during the trip and is always checking on their baby? That's fine. Vacancy or no vacancy? Vacancy. And again, my goal is that they shouldn't have to do that. Like I okay. like to be ahead of that and um, really send them probably more than they want. I feel like I can manage that and uh, because I'd be the same way. So good point. How about a dog that humps everything in sight? We would have a conversation with the the client. um, And if it continues, he can't come here just because no, no vacancy because (laughs) it could create issues between the dogs. Some dogs may not like it and may get aggressive. And then I have a big problem. So I would probably say no vacancy until that's fixed. Agreed. I think that's a good, that's a good rule. All right. Last one, a dog that smells like feet. Well, I would, again, we're in a different environment these days. <laughs> I would probably say vacancy. I do have some spray. And if I absolutely had to, if it was a long term, I'd probably bathe them myself, but I would tell the client, Hey, I gave your dog a bath, yeah. you know, probably charge them for it. But, um, you know, that's doable. Perfect. I like that. Yeah. Reserve the right to bathe and give That's bikini right. waxes and manscape, right? Right. And charge <laughs> as needed. client as needed. Exactly. Exactly <laughs> right. So describe your setup for us so that we kind of get a visual of what you've got going for these 10 dogs plus four that you have already as your own. So um, I live on an acre of land and I have four different fenced in yards. I only use two at this point because the other two are really big and they're a little like uh, Wild Wild West. They're kind of woodsy. I'm kind of saving those for later for further growth, but they have two different areas they can go to. They have, we have, they have a dog door to get outside if they want to. They're never unsupervised. So my, my big deal is if I'm here, then everybody's out and everybody's playing and I'm supervising. That's great. Anytime I leave, are going to shower, or, you know, not can't supervise, they have to be in their kennels. So they I have one room that's dedicated, I call it the dog room to all my dogs. And you know, there's only 10 that come. So it's not, you know, and I can always put them in other places. But for the most part, they stay in that room, I have various size kennels. Um, because I found that that works best for me since my needs change all the time. So it's much, it looks a lot different if I have 10 dogs in there than if I have one dog in there. Right. Because I want the one dog to be comfortable, but I, you know, if I have 10, I have to make room for all 10. So I just have various sized kennels all set up next to each other. Or, you know, like if I have two dogs that don't, don't like each other very well, you know, I separate them or what, what have you, but, or I can even put them in another room, but it's very cozy. It's very hands-on and it's me. I don't have anybody else here. It's just me. Nobody else is working for me. I mean, this is a very personal thing for me and it's something I absolutely just love to do. That's awesome. And it definitely sounds boutique. I mean, when people think of boarding in the home, people get like, you know, these crazy images in their head of just like dogs crammed somewhere or outside running crazy. It sounds like what you have, luckily you have this, this land that you can really like, I'm sure they enjoy that. And many oh, yeah. people in your, do many people in your area have that much land or is that something that some dogs can really enjoy as a change? Yeah. Some dogs can really enjoy that because I moved out to Spring Branch, which is more or less in the hill country because of that. Not that I can necessarily afford a big place, but I was able to find a smaller home for me on a, on a larger piece of land for that reason. And I was Perfect. very intentional on that. And uh, that's why I did it it's for the dogs and, you know, me growing this business and um, for them to have plenty of area to run and roam and sniff and smell and, and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. How do your dogs like it? Do they enjoy being host dogs? You know, um, my four dogs, three of them are 11 and older. (laughs) And one is one. 
He just, he's wow. just turning one. So the one-year-old is like, woo, party every day, you know, the other three are like, oh gosh, here we go again. You know, it's like, <laughs> they are so used to it. They're just like, okay. They look at the dog. They're like, mm, all right, cool. You know, and then my puppy wants to play with everybody and, you know, but he's, he's really good. I, I've uh, learned a lot over the years. And so when I got him, I was much more cognizant about the socialization, the exercise, just getting around different dogs in different situations. And so he's been really a good add to my pack and is very, very good with it, with new dogs. Yeah. I bet that's like, that's like a dream come true for socialization. Did you get him really young? Yes. I got him uh, at 12 weeks. I rescued him Perfect. from uh, the Cocker Spaniel Rescue out of Austin. And oh, cool. he's a Cocker mix. So I've had like this, he's like my seventh Cocker. I'm like a Cocker person. I don't know why, but uh, he's the first mix I've had. And he's just been, he's been great. It, it's been Aww. so much fun. And um, I got him right when COVID started hitting like the first of April and so with me, us being so dead it, as far as pet sitting and dog boarding, he's really the first dog I've had in my life that I've been able to stay home with him every single day and do the potty. Tra- like he was potty trained at four months. I'm like, yeah, I mean, but it was me every day with him all day long. Right. So, you know, it, awesome. it was, he was a godsend and I didn't really plan it that way, but I think maybe God planned it that way. And um, he just kind of helped me get through the uggs of you know, being at home with no business and, you know, it gave me a, a purpose, you know, I'd work Absolutely. out for several hours a day because I had nothing else to do. Then I would come home and be, <laughs> you know, puppy mom. So, that is uh, awesome. Worked out great. That is so cool. And that's so- why his name is Roan. It's after Roan. Actually, what's funny is I was wondering, I was like, is that a Texas thing? So I'm glad you mentioned that. So Roan for Corona. I love yeah. that name. It's he, so good. He couldn't be Rona because people are calling it right. the Rona. Like that's right. a girl name. So that's why. Yeah. Right. Roan is so good. I, I <laughs> love it. That's a great name and very creative. I was actually thinking, I, w- I wonder if she'll mention it because that's a cool name and it's unique. Yes. I love it. So have any of your guests done like behaved poorly where you were like, I never should have taken this dog in? Well, yes. Um, there's actually, there's actually been one, there's been a couple um, that I've had to tell not to come back just because they just don't play well with others. Um, one was kind of like, maybe I shouldn't have taken him to begin with, but I was just going to try and see, but then I'm like, you know, I should have listened to my inner voice and said, mm-hmm. no, but that was okay. You know, talk to the owner and, you know, discussed everything. He was very, he understood the other dog was a, he was a rescue and, um, I I've known him you know, since he was a puppy, he was probably about three or four. And he just like had a couple of just really bad behaviors um, in the, in a couple of times that I had him. And the first time I just kind of chalked it up to, well, it was just one time. I know the dog, you know, I got to give him a bit of the doubt. I know he's a good dog. I've known him for years, that kind of thing. The second go around, um, he actually got into it with my dog and nothing bad happened. Um, but, um, I just can't, I can't risk that. That's just, you know, as, as much as I need the business, it is not worth that. Um, I, right. I cannot risk that. I cannot risk my reputation. Uh, I don't want the dogs being hurt. I mean, it would just absolutely devastate me. So, you know, I did have to say, you know, I, I'm sorry, but this just isn't the right place for your dog anymore. And this is what happened. And um, yeah, it has happened. It's not fun when it happens. I don't like it, but it's one of those things you just have to do. Yeah, for sure. Is dog on dog drama the worst case scenario? Or have you had like any destructive dogs where you've had mm. to kennel them completely? It's really... I haven't had very much destruction, which I'm grateful for. Um, It's really been the dogs interacting with each other and just, you know, because my environment, you know, my house is not big. It is small. My dogs are there. So they really have to get along very well. And if they don't, like I said, it doesn't work for anybody. It doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for my dogs. It doesn't work for me. So, um, you know, that's why I'm small and boutique-ish and, you know, when I find a good client, I'm like, tell your friends about me, but you know, they have to be like you because right. I'm very, I mean, they know after they go through the process, how picky I am. So what is the process? Do you do like a little bit of a, an intro? What does that mm-hmm. look like? So I have a checklist that I send them first. 
um, because they have to meet all the basic requirements like, you know, updated vaccines, including the Bordetella. They have to have a pet ID tag. They have to be on flea prevention, all those basic things. Um, and then I have to know what medications and all that kind of, th- kind of stuff. But the main thing is them getting along with other dogs. And they may say, oh, yeah, my, you know, mine gets along, you know, and if I, I don't really know the person and know the pet, I'll have them bring the pet over because what in their mind, what is, you know, good getting along with others may not be what it is here. Right. Um, so if I have any questions or if I don't really know the dog or the client, then I'll have them bring them over just for kind of a test just to see. And I've had that people do that all the time. They, you know, they say, Hey, can I come by and see your facility? Can I come by and see the back of the yards, your house, where you keep them? And I welcome that because like I said, I'm, I'm not for everybody. I'm not about, let me see how many dogs I can cram in here. That is mm-hmm. not what I'm about. So, um, yeah, I, I welcome anybody to come at any time just to see the how I do things around here and in the yards and everything. And you also own a pet sitting business where you provide services in the client's home. Correct. So how do you know which pet is best for which situation usually? You know, that's really up to the client. You know, um, there are some dogs like we had a believe it or not, we just got a new client that has an 18 year old dog, 18. And um, obviously, you know, that dog is used to its own house, can barely see, can hear, you know, I would never want to bring that dog to my place. Um, Just because it's a new place. It's it's a bunch of dogs. It's crazy. You know, that dog is really best suited for his own house where he feels comfortable and safe and knows where the furniture is and the, yes. you know, how's it, how to navigate the house. Yes. So, well, um, you know, that's the great thing about um, having both options because there's some, you know, there's some pet clients, pet parents that have dogs that are one dog families and they're have a lot of energy. Well, they don't want to stay in the house all by themselves with, you know, us coming by, two or three times a day for 30 minutes, they'd rather be with me for hours on end and be able to right. run outside for hours or, you know, and play with other dogs. So it's, you know, it's, we help the client try to figure that out, but it's honestly really what's best for the dog in the situation. That's awesome. And budgeting probably, is it, is it more affordable to do your boarding place versus three visits a day at the house? It is. So I don't know if you want to go into pricing, but we, you don't have to, but like just, uh, just kind of, it's about, um, twice as, as expensive to have us come three times to somebody's house than it is for somebody to board at my house. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly the kind of metric I was thinking about. Okay, awesome. So I wanna continue digging into what you do and also your affiliation with the Texas Pet Sitters Association as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Molly, here's your dinner. (laughs) Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a six inch tray for large bowls and a four inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, And today I'm chatting with Deanna Shar, who has an in-home pet care business and also boards pets, dogs, specifically in her own home. But that's not all she does. She's a very busy lady, apart from also working out three, four times a day. What did you say? No, five or six times a week. (laughs) <laughs> Five or six times a week, but you did, a, you said a couple hours a day since yeah, well, uh, Corona yeah. started. Well, you know, when we had Corona, like 
we literally had nothing else to do. So I was fortunate enough to have a friend who has a, like a kind of a home gym place and, and places to work out in, in her house, in her garage. So I would go there like every day, which was awesome just to kind of break the whole monotony of being at home by yourself. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, we would just kind of take our time and, you know, it would take two or three hours and we're just, you know, that's awesome. when you have 12 hours to, you know, <laughs> to spend, I mean, you might as well do a couple hours working out. And, um, I know it helped. I mean, it was still hard, you know, trying to get through all of that, but I know it did help, but that's awesome. Usually it's at least an hour a day, if not more. Very nice. So you have, t- you own two businesses You work out at least an hour a day, multiple times a week, and you're also the secretary of the Texas Pet Sitters Association. Were you a founding member of that organization? Yes. So um, I, when I first started my pet sitting business, I came from corporate, a corporate environment where in, 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 in human resources specifically, which was about, you know, training and, you know, developing people and that kind of thing. And When I decided to take the plunge to be my own boss and to go into pet sitting, I tried to figure out, okay, well, for me, I was like, all I know is, well, I need to get trained because I want to be good. And, you know, just, you know, liking dogs isn't enough. I mean, correct. you you don't want to go to somebody's house and go, well, I really like dogs. Can I sit your, you know, you can't. (laughs) So uh, I have a business partner on the pet sitting side and we decided that we wanted to educate ourselves as much as possible. And so we reached out to um, PSI, Pet Sitters International, and we went through their process of certification, which was very helpful and way more than what I thought it was going to be. And we, we've also done our pet CPR and first aid training every other year. And we've also did our you know, insurance and bonding and all that kind of stuff. We, we really wanted to make sure that when we started this, we, we did it right. And right. that, we, you know, we didn't have any clients, so we had to be credible in some way. Um, so that's what we did. We, we got educated that way and then just, you know, sat there for many days waiting for the phone to ring. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a firm believer of just visualizing things. And, and one, one thing that I tell people is, you know, I had a, I got a filing cabinet that I was going to put all my clients files in, you know, cause I was kind of old school, you know, paper, um, you know, but you have, you know, they're signed agreements and stuff. You have to have some of that in paper maybe. So right. I, you know, I'd, I'd pull up the drawers and they're just completely empty. And I, I, I thought to myself one day, those are going to be full one day. They're just going to be, they're going to be slam packed full of people. And today I have like no room in there because it is slam packed with clients. That's um, awesome. And, you know, we, we did that a lot by word of mouth. We're not marketing geniuses by any means. I know, you know, we could have probably done a lot better job, but we were starting with nothing other than what we had. And we did the best we could through referrals and having a referral program and that kind of thing. And then things just grew from there. And then that's when the boarding came on because being a single person, I needed some more income. And, um, I really, really love the boarding in my house. I'm a homebody. It works for me. Like it's fun getting out sometimes, but for the most part, I like to be at home and, um, with my dogs and with other people's dogs and, you know, just, it, it brings me a lot of satisfaction just seeing, you know, them wanting to come here and their owner seeing them run to me to come, yeah. you know, that's got to, to give the owner the best feeling in the world that, you know, I can go on my trip or I can go on my vacation and I don't have to worry about my, my dogs are happy. They're not in some vet office in a kennel getting let out at six o'clock at night being the last let out or, or whatever yep. it is. So I'm here and, you know, I can deal with things overnight. You know, I have dogs that may start barking at night. I can get up and go in there and see what's going on. I mean, sometimes it's, they've thrown up in the kennel or they, you know, and I can handle it to where they're not sitting in it all night. Like they would be at any other facility. So, um, it's true. It's a very specialized thing. It's a very unique thing. And it's, you know, like I said, it's about, it's about quality, not quantity. And it sounds like it really fulfills you. Oh, it does. I mean, this is what I was made to do. I mean, I was made to be poor and take care of dogs. (laughs) I guess I was too. Okay. Because anybody who goes into this is not going into this industry for the money. We're definitely not. (laughs) Let's be clear. I mean, it's, it's great. Um, 
and it, it's very fulfilling and I do make a living. It's just been, you know, this year has been rough. I mean, no, no question about it. It's been a rough year. And when everybody's working from home and not going anywhere, why do they need us? Correct. <laughs> you know? I know. I know. So, I know. I'm just like, yeah, so hopefully, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to a better 2021 and I think things are going to, going to get better and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, hopefully. So you have something exciting coming up in 2021. You are part of the planning committee for the Texas Pet Sitters Association's annual conference. And this year it's a little bit different than years past. Yeah, so I was a founding member um, or I, I went to the very first Texas Pet Sitters Associ- conference, excuse me. And it was started by Michelle Romano and Kathy Vaughn. Um, mm-hmm. And the purpose was and is to provide a high quality educational experience for pet sitters to, to better themselves, to better, so they can better care for clients and clients' pets and, and make the, the pets happier in the world, you know, if you want to get yeah. uh, philosophical about it. Um, <laughs> but do it at a, at a price where people can afford it. And no knock to any of the other very wonderful conferences out there. But, you know, when I would go to conference when I was in corporate, well, you know, the company paid for it. Of course. And I got paid when I went and Correct. they paid for all the food. And right. like when you're doing your own thing, you pay for all that and you're not working and you Correct. don't get paid. It, you know, like right. it's just like a triple whammy almost. So yep. for, especially for people like me just starting out, I mean, unless you just have a lot of money sitting around, it's, it's hard to try to continue your education. And um, I was just so grateful to Kathy and Michelle for doing this and for doing it in Texas. Um, right. That was close to, you know, I didn't have to get a hotel and I could come home at night and, you know, all those wonderful things. And um, after the first conference, I, you know, I was stalking them. Like, I want to help you guys. Like, how do we keep this going? How oh, can awesome. we, how can we keep, keep doing this? Like, let me help you. Like, I'll do anything. Like, what do you need me to do? And they finally let me in. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, since uh, this is our sixth annual. And so I've been helping since the second annual. And um, this year, because of COVID and all of our restrictions, we we decided to do online. And, you know, we don't prefer that. And we understand that a lot of our attendees would prefer to be in person. But as you know, it's kind of what we have to do. Right. But you know, we have to be different. We're from Texas. We have to be better or try to be <laughs> bigger and better than anybody else. So um, we're, we're really excited about our platform. So we partnered with Whova, H, I mean, W-H-O-V-A, Whova. And it it is a really slick platform for online conferences. It allows a lot of interaction, believe it or not, a lot of networking, a lot of places for notes and just, it's just a, a a really intuitive, which is what I need and slick system. It's super nice. It's just, it's, it's, we just felt like if we're going to do this, we really need to, to do it right. And we need to try to be as different and as we can. So uh, people will enjoy it and won't be like, Oh God, here we go. Another online, you know, maybe fall asleep conference. Right. So we're, we're, we have, as we always do, we have our swag boxes, which are going to our VIPs who signed up for the VIP members. And as far as the, v, the VIPs, they get membership in the Texas Pet Sitters Association, which was just put together this year. So wow. yeah, it's, it's, that's really cool too. You know, we've had people in the past come to us and go, you know, why don't y'all do something, you know, formal and you know because it was just literally like me Kathy and Michelle like together and putting all this stuff (laughs) like begging people for whatever we could get and you know it really was just us so um to have us to be an association now it's a really special thing and we have a little bit more credibility we have people that our members will benefit a lot from that because we will have like monthly get togethers and updates on different topics um, and just all kinds of different like Facebook groups and, and ways for people to, to get together and to share things. So, um, and, and we're, we're official now. 
So yeah. like, you know, when we go and ask people to help us and to sponsor, it's not like, they're like, well, what's your, are you a 403B or whatever yeah, that yeah, is? Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> uh, no, we're just like four people that's asking for money <laughs> to do a car. You know, it's like, now I can say, well, I'm the secretary of the Texas Pet Sitters Association, which nothing has changed, but, you know, except for my title and they don't know that. So, well, that's what I was going to say, because I was a speaker in 2017. 17 at or 18. The Texas, 2017, yeah. because I was pregnant with Noah. I was oh, yeah. 13 I weeks that. pregnant. I remember you were like, I'm a little sick right now, but I think I'm yes. going <laughs> to. I remember it was the 13th week of pregnancy when things start going better and you're not yeah. as like mornings, or at least a, a lot of people aren't. I was, uh, my morning sickness was kind of on the mend and I was so honored to be invited and I had such a great time, but I was there as a speaker and the speakers you had were amazing. And the facility was wonderful. It was a uh, Kathy Vaughn's doggy daycare and it was a great conference. So you might feel like you needed that 401c3 or whatever. <laughs> but to me, I thought you guys were official all the way back then. So oh, congratulations okay. on that. And well, good. Uh, I'm glad you felt that way. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I've seen the plan for this year. And I think you have some really great speakers, but there are a lot of speakers I've never heard of. So how did you guys uh, choose these awesome speakers? Well, I have to hand it to Kathy. Kathy knows a lot of people. And she goes to the big conferences and she, she knows she's a networker and she's been in the business for over 20 years. So when it comes to speakers and topics, we rely heavily on Kathy and she every year just comes out with, you know, what about this person? What about that person? Um, we're like, who's that? And where are they? You know? <laughs> uh, but it ends up, they end up being just awesome. And, you know, like this year we have, we pride ourselves in having topics that people can take home and do something with tomorrow. And, um, you know, very, very uh, applicable. What am I trying to say? Uh, usable, like the next day. Right. Yeah, so yeah. like we have like, we have some marketing, different marketing things, which I think all of us can get better at, especially during this time, you know, how to be a five star business, you know, what does that mean? And how do I get there? Some things like that we all need that maybe we don't like think is the sexiest thing at, or, or, so much, <laughs> but like basic account, business accounting, just from all these, you know, a lot of us have had to ask for money and, and, and applied for loans and right. like, how do we do that with our taxes? And so we're going to have a, an accountant there to, to help us kind of navigate through that. And also to help us like, you know, how do we prepare as a business for this to happen again? I mean, hopefully it doesn't, but like, how do you prepare for a rainy day? How do you prepare for retirement? How do you prepare for another pandemic? Like, what does that look like? So we're really excited about having like a professional come in and tell us about that. Then we have like special um, sessions about cats, just about cats from a cat professional. We have farm care. You know, some of us, you know, back. Well, yeah, you're I'm in Texas. In, I'm in Texas. Yeah. We're in Texas. <laughs> I'm in the hill country. And, you know, people have horses and cows and pigs and, you know, chickens. And so um, we have a couple of our own uh, Texas pet sitters that are going to get that are actually going to share how they do it. Um, and then uh, we we're really excited to have Kate McQuillan come um, and, and do several of the sessions and also a workshop. And, and I'm super excited about the workshop because our attendees will go away with a three month marketing plan for their business. They will walk away from that workshop with something they can, you know, implement tomorrow for three months. I mean, yes. that is, I mean, and for, for how much did you pay for this? Wait, nothing. It's free, right? It's free. So this conference is free. It's free. You're not paying anything. <laughs> is that crazy? It's crazy. It's amazing. And, and, and for those who aren't familiar with Kate McQuillan, she has a very successful pet sitting franchise in Ireland and she does business coaching and she's known for these marketing plans and social media schedules and things like that. So to get access to one of her offerings with no money involved yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And she, I think she has three different sessions. And so you could sign up for nothing and get those three sessions. And by the way, you have until February the 18th to sign up and That's you can awesome. sign up for free. You can watch however many you want. Um, it's February 19th, 20th and 21st. So please like, what have you got to lose? Sign up. Another thing I'll say about that is 
we are typically around 65 to 75 attendees over the last few years. We are approaching 160. So congratulations. That's huge. Excited about that. And our hope is that people will, will, because it's free, they'll take advantage of like seeing the quality, seeing these amazing speakers come, seeing these people that this, this is what they do. They're so credible. And then maybe next year when we're in person, they'll want to come down because they right. keep here. Like hotels aren't that bad. Food's not that bad. Like the conference isn't expensive. Like we really want people to like really, you know, get a good taste of what we're about and come next year and, and, and like come meet us. Cause it was super nice to meet all of you guys there uh, in 2017. And it's a beautiful area. So like you can make it a long, a longer stay and go to Hill Country. I had a great time and I would San love Antonio, to Antonio. Yes. Know, Alamo, like all, you know, the river walk, all those. Di- yes. So many things that are close that you can do and, and it's not expensive. So, no, you know, that's where, that's where our hope is. Um, so anyway, we have some other topics too that you could, you, you know, feel free to go to texaspetsitters.com, txpetsitters.com. Um, and you can see all of our schedules, all the speakers, their bios, their pictures, you know, any questions you have, our schedule, the agenda, when everything's happening. And, you know, don't be scared of Whova, you know, our platform, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, about the least tech savvy person you'll ever want to meet. And it's even easy for me. So that should, you know, give you a lot of faith in being able to get on and, and really enjoy the conference and some networking, you know, even, even when you're online. And you guys have a group on Facebook for attendees, right? We do. I'll make sure to link it in, in the description so that we can have that for people to join if they're going to attend. Yeah. And the, the thing about that is we've kind of changed that this year, though. Um, we're okay. making that for the people that signed up for VIP, which I think it was like a it was a nominal payment. Um, like okay. it was like 60 or $70. I can't remember, but anyway, they got a lot of goodies with that. And one of those things was, you know, being a member of the Texas pet sitters association, which also gave you access to the Facebook, the group. Perfect. The group. Well, so I mean, I think that push. that group, yeah, absolutely. The group is super, super helpful because then you can troubleshoot the things that you learned, help each other implement these things in your business. I love oh, yeah. I love that follow up, you know, like that you went through the conference, you got your stuff, but this industry can be pretty lonely. You're with pets all the time. So having somebody to kind of use as a sounding board to the things that you like, didn't like, had questions on in this kind of a group for 60 bucks. I mean, I, or whatever the, the yeah, nominal fee nominal. may be. It was nominal. I can't remember what it was. I think that's was, huge. It is. And the thing is, you know, one thing I've learned is that everybody wants to help everybody. There's not, you know, and and nobody's worried about you're going to take my business. There's plenty to go around. There's plenty to go around. You know, I would have loved to have been a little bit more connected when I was first started and really been a little bit more bold in asking people than I was. Because now if anybody asks me anything, I'm like, yeah, let me share. You know, this is what I did and it didn't work. And, you know, I'm I'm so happy to share it. And all of our folks are. So it's such a great benefit. and, And you can ask the questions that you may not really want to ask, but you need the answer to, and it's okay. No. And these are unprecedented times. I know that that's like the cliche of what we say all the time, but like, this is a very strange time to be a business owner. So having somebody to like chat that is in the same space as you and is experiencing the same lull as you are, and will probably be experiencing the spike when things go back to normal. I think that's a huge benefit to anybody who is going to attend the conference, get that information and then have that team to kind of work with after that. That's awesome. Is it only really meant for pet sitters or would a groomer or a pet uh, boutique owner benefit from us from attending? Any of those folks would, a, a vet tech, um, anybody who, who deals with pets in any kind of way, it would certainly help. Um, awesome. I always feel like, you know, knowledge is power. And the more you know, the better you're going to be. And even if it's not specifically what you do, there are going to be little nuggets of things that will 
help you in whatever you're doing in regards to pets. That is awesome. Okay. So we have to wrap this up. Otherwise we talk all day long. Talk shop is what we do here. So I could talk shop all day. Um, so tell us how people in your area can reach you about your boarding, your pet sitting. You already talked about the association. I'll make sure to link it also in comments and in the, the description of the video, but um, tell us how we can meet, how we can support your business specifically. Oh, well, thank you so much. So the pet sitting is the name of the business is, is passion fur F U R paws P A W S. Um, and, um, we're our, our website is passion fur paws S a like San Antonio.com. And our number is two one zero six eight five one six one six. That's the pet sitting side. The boarding side is me. Um, it, it's my website is Deanna's doghouse.com D E A N N A S doghouse.com. And my phone number is two one zero six eight five five zero four six. Perfect. Awesome. I really and I will it. also, of course, absolutely. And I will also put your website, um, in the, your links at pet life radio. We'll put a bio up on the pet life radio website. Everything will be there for anybody who's interested in following up with you. And Perfect. to wrap up, I just want to propose a toast to you. Cheers for being here Cheers. and to sharing all of your expertise and your passion for pets. Thank you. Cheers to thank you. And cheers to our uh, executive producer, Mark winter for making this show possible. Cheers to all of our viewers and listeners on pet life radio. Here's to a life covered in pet hair because there is no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. To learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. We'll see you next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>